sa introduction po ng uh, susunod na speaker. Oo, ma'am. Mag- ano ka na? Din ka na o siguro sa intro- introduction para matapos na kayo. <laughs> okay, sige. No, ma'am. Kaso ano yun? Bagong link na ulit? Or ito pa din naman? Ito pa din kaya? Ayan. So, uh, dear dear participants, kami po ay humingi ng paumanhin sa sa pagkakaroon po ng uh, internet internet connection failure. Uh, hindi po natin na uh, makontrol ganito po talaga pag live, no? <laughs> Medyo hindi natin makontrol, di ba partner, yung mga bagay na talagang hindi natin inaasahan. Yeah. Pero yeah. hindi ibig sabihin, titigil tayo. Hashtag, tuloy lang ang buhay. <laughs> okay, Laban. so, sabi nga sa nabasa ko kanina, no? Science is a part of reality of living. Talaga. It is the what, the why, and the how of everything in our experience. So sa ating part 2 na strategies, ito yung mga kailangan nating mga teachers lalo na sa grade 4 no? para ma-execute natin ng maayos ang ating mga lessons. So dear participants, our next facilitator is a master teacher one having 24 years in service. She is the music and research coordinator in their school and an awardee of 29 2019 the Kilanguro award to share to share her expertise on different science strategies let us welcome the strategy one with 5e learning cycle from passionate master teacher one of Thomas Pinpin Memorial Elementary School Abukay District Ma'am Elisa O Violeta Some teaching strategies and approaches for science. Think fair share. According to Nancy Smokey Daniels and Nancy Stenick, called TPS, the most instantaneously and flexible structure we can add to our classroom. Ano nga ba ang think fair share? Think can be writing or thinking. Fair so, can be two to four ma'am. students. Okay And share can be large group of okay. the whole class. Iin lang ko by Jessica. Ginagawa natin ito <laughs> sa ating klase. Ito ay example ng think mm, for share. Think, share. think for share as TPS is a collaborative learning strategy where students work together to solve a problem 
or answer questions about an assigned reading. This strategy requires students to think individually about the topic or answer to a question and second, share ideas with your classmates. Think for share is simple and efficient. Think mode, students are independently thinking or writing. Fair mode, students are sharing their responses with partner or small group. And the share mode, teacher is randomly calling on students or students volunteer the answer. Second, this mind map by Busan 1991 is a visual tool that helps students remember and associate keywords and concepts. How to make this mind map? Place a colored image in the center of the piece of paper. Second, branch the main ideas of the center image using a single word. Print words on thick lines. Then, use additional colored images to stimulate the brain. Elaborate on the main ideas using thin lines connecting to the thick lines with a printed word above them. This is the example of mind map. Today, I will discuss 5E instructional model. According to Bybee and Landis, at 1990 can be used to design a science lesson and is based upon cognitive psychology, constructivist learning theory, and best practices in science teaching. It consists of cognitive stages of learning that comprise engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. It was developed and refined by Biological Sciences Curriculum Study in Colorado, USA and promotes collaborative active learning in which students work together to solve problems and investigate new concepts by asking questions, observing, analyzing, and drawing conclusions. The first step in Engage, the teacher gains students' prior knowledge and identify knowledge gaps, and students are encouraged to ask questions or draw on experiences. Misconceptions about the topic or concept does make notes about revisiting this misconception, and the purpose is to get students excited and ready to explore the topic or concept. Activities may include picture observation and short video presentation. Let's go for explore. The teacher provides a hands-on activity. Students investigating a problem and begin to pose real questions, develop hypotheses, and test certain variables. The key concepts in the topic are identified and students develop. The teacher acts as a consultant in this explore. Explain. It is more teacher-directed and guided by the student's experience in the previous space. Students explain their understanding of concept, and the teacher corrects students' misconception and provide formal definition notes and labels, and utilize video, computer software, or other aids to boost understanding. We have now the PowerPoint presentation. The teacher discuss from elaborate. Knowledge and vocabulary gain is now elaborated upon and explored. And the teacher may ask students to create presentations or conduct additional investigation to reinforce new skills. In this one, the new investigation, students formulate and test new hypotheses. Dito po, magkatulong na ang guro at mga bata sa pagpaformulate ng hypothesis. Let's go for elaborate. In practicing new skills, students may take data and make new conclusions. Newly acquired terms and concepts are now used in conversation. And writing allows students to cement or solidify their knowledge before evaluation. Activities may include descriptive, comparative, and experimental investigations. Let's go for evaluate. Time for students to evaluate their own learning and allows for both formal and informal assessment.
and during the phase, teacher can observe their students and see whether they have a complete grasp of the core concept. And that is the assessment. Let's go for application of teaching strategies in science. Duma po duman tayo sa Animalandia, which is my topic is about animals have different body structures that make them adapt to different habitats. Now engage. Let's play word puzzle. Guess the word. Be correct. Another. Answer. Pause. Very good. What is this? Teeth. Correct. The last one. That is the sucking tube. Let's go for review. Where do these animals live? In water or on land? Shark is for water. Rabbit is for land. Goat is for land also. And the lobster is for water. And monkey is for the land. Let's go for explore. How do mother chicken protect their chicks from hawk? Kung bakit dinadagit ng lawin ang mga sisiw, ang lawin ang siyang predator at ang sisiw ang siyang free. For activity 1, together with your partner, and think fair, share. Ask what body parts of animals protect themselves from their enemies. And the example of answer is horse, lion, and four legs for body parts of animals used for protection. For the group activity, material managers, reporter or leader, and the writer. And the standard to be followed is for working cooperatively, quality, fast, and neatly. For activity 2, the group class into three groups then follow the procedure as a group activity. Pupils will proceed to answer guide question. How will animals survive in an animal's particular habitat? And give them remind the pupils of precautionary measures in using sharp objects like scissors if they cut pictures of animals and display their output or creation in front of the class and be ready for sharing and reporting their works by the leader. This is the example of activity. Let's go for explanations. This time, this is the group reporting. Present the answer through the reporting of their leader and reporter. Then, instruct them to describe their creation as to how it adapts itself to its environment, habitat for protection, and what body structure they used. From the discussion, different structures of animals as free that protect them from enemies as predators and make them adapt to their habitat. One is camouflage, a protective coloration in animals. This adaptation allows some animals to blend with their surroundings. Grasshopper Toads Another is spider and owl. Then fox and dove copy the color of the environment. Ant, fire ant sting. Lion, sharp pointed teeth and claws. Crab, is pincers. Horse is four legs. Carabao is for horn. Snake is for fangs. 
Let's go for elaborate. Other animals imitate the shape, smell, taste, color, and even sound of other animals. This is called mimicry. Example, hoverfly to honeybee. Elephant hook, uh, you use the insect mimic uh, eucalyptus leaf. And visory butterfly as monarch butterfly as poisonous and not poisonous. Remember, most insects secrete chemicals that they use to protect themselves from other animals like squid, wasp, and snake. This is the example of squid. This is the example as snake, wasp, and squid. Grasshopper, toads, dove, snakes, and leopard blending to their environment called camouflage. A skunk make its enemy away by blowing a foul odor. Other animals protect their own kinds. Animals like turtles, crabs, snails, and oysters have protective shell coverings. When they sense danger, they keep their bodies inside their shells. How do animals protect themselves by adaptation? Animals protect themselves by using their body parts such as strong legs, paws, claws, sharp pointed teeth, and other parts of the body. Other animals protect their own kind by staying together within hearing distance. And for animals that cannot move, just they use their hard shell by keeping their bodies inside. Furthermore, others secrete chemical. For practice exercises, much body part of animals used for protection against enemies in column A to column B. Another, using mind mapping, right body structures of animals that protect them from enemies. And for evaluation, infer body structure used by animals below to protect themselves from the enemies. Choose your answer inside the rectangle. I gave five item tests. Assignment research on how animals escape from extreme weather, then give examples of an animal. And for the values, compassion for animals is intimately connected with goodness of character. It may be confidently asserted that he who is cruel to animals cannot be a good man. I hope you learned from this video. Thank you. God bless. Yes, okay. So that is what's our first strategy, partner. Ano, alam mo, partner, tong sa think, pair, and share, yung collaborative learning strategy, where students, they work together, they answer questions together, or they uh, solve problems. So it develops not only their, ano, eh, their thinking skills, but also their social aspects. Diba, partner? Hello, ma'am. Nawala po yata yung aking ka-partner. Okay. So, let us move forward. Thank you, Ma'am okay. Elisa, for your wonderful strategy. Okay. Surely, teachers will take into consideration what you have shared. So, our next facilitator is a teacher one with Master of Arts in Education, having four years in the field. He was a former science, DLC, and Brigada Coordinator, and presently the TLE coordinator in their school. He was awarded the Kilang Guro in 2016 and excellent teacher in 2019. He was also a teacher coach and won in various contests in the district and division level. And to give us more applicable strategy, let us hear from Creative Teacher 1 of Donya Elementary School, Orani District, Sir Jefferson John P. Basto. This 
time, let's talk about how to teach this topic that is suited in our new setup. Most of us, my co-teachers, are using modular distance learning. And some of us are using blended learning, where in combination of modular and online learning. As what our previous discussions shared to us, there are many teaching strategies that we can apply in our teaching. We have visualization, cooperative learning, inquiry-based instruction, differentiation, technology in the classroom, behavior management, and professional development. Ang lahat po ng nabanggit ay maaari po nating gamitin sa ating pagtuturo. Ngunit, kailangan alam po muna natin ang kakayahan ng bawat mag-aaral so we can use or apply the appropriate teaching strategies para sa kanila. But let me focus in the principle of Jan Dewey, which is the learning by doing. Learning by doing is the process whereby people make sense of their experiences, especially those experiences in which they or our pupils actively engage in making things and exploring the world. Sabi nga po natin, experience is the best teacher. In the principle of learning by doing, we let our pupils explore the real world. We help them be in the reality by showing real objects in our classroom wherein very much applicable or usable sa topic po natin. Studies have shown that kinesthetic learning, where student carries out physical activities rather than listening to a lecture, is the most popular type of learning with student doing helps them to gain a better understanding of the material. The more na na-expose po ang mga bata sa mga aktual o real objects, ay mas nauunawaan po nila ang ating aralin. Since we are in the new setup in educating learners because of the pandemic, we must be creative, innovative, and flexible enough in our teaching strategies. And I know, teachers attain high level of pedagogical knowledge when it comes to this matter. Paano po ba natin ituturo sa mga pupils natin ang topic na ito, especially now that we are not allowed in the face-to-face -face learning? First, we can define again the meaning of the terrestrial and aquatic plants as a sort of a view for them. We can also give or show more examples to deepen their knowledge about the previous discussion. Para po ma-refresh ang mga bata sa previous lesson, as what we do in the face-to-face -face learning, tayo po ay nagbabalik-aral. Tama po ba? After reviewing the lesson, we explicitly proceed to our topic, which is the specialized structures of plants. Kung sa face-to-face -face learning ay nag -e explore ang mga bata sa loob at labas ng classroom, Paano naman po sa modular or blended learning? We can allow our pupils to explore their backyard since safe pa rin naman po sa loob ng kanilang mga bakuran. We can ask the help of their learning bodies to guide them for their safety. We ask them to look for different plants that can be found in their backyard. With the use of notebook and ball pen, list down the names of the plants. Let us expect na mas marami pong makikita ang mga terrestrial plants ang mga bata rather than aquatic plants. Maliban na lamang po kung sila ay nakatira malapit sa ilog or katupigan. But we can guide them. Pwede nating sabihin na ilan sa mga indoor plants na makikita sa kanilang bahay ay pwedeng aquatic plants gaya ng mga pothos na very common sa atin. At kung talagang wala pong makitang aquatic plants sa mga bata sa kanilang backyard or sa kanilang bahay, 
we can tell them na mag-search po sila sa Google since halos karamihan naman po ay may access sa internet or kahit data lamang ang gamit nila. In a worst case scenario, kung talagang walang access ang bata sa internet or data, pwede tayo na mismo ang mag-provide ng mga actual photos ng mga aquatic plants. After that, ask the pupils what they have observed sa mga plants na nakita po nila. For sure, ang isasagot po sa atin ng mga bata ay mga body parts gaya ng leaves, roots, stems, flowers, if there is any. If wala pong lumabas sa kanilang sagot about specialized structures, we can give them guide question like compare the two or three plants in the list, what are their differences? Hanggang sa lumabas po ang topic po natin. For the aquatic plants, we can tell them to make improvised mini aquarium and put aquatic plants as many as possible. Then tackle how do aquatic plants adapt and the specialized structures that help them survive to its environment. Discuss to pupils that plants use their specialized structures to acquire their basic needs, to protect themselves against predators, and to help in reproduction. Discuss also that water, air, temperature, and soil types are big factors to help plants survive to their environments. For the activity, we can show pictures of different plants and let the pupils identify what specialized structures characterized by the given plants. For the additional activity, ask the pupils what are the importance of specialized structures in the plants. Hindi po hadlang ang pandemyang kinahaharap natin ngayon upang ang pagkatuto ng ating mga mag-aaral ay huminto. Mahuhusay po ang mga guro. Sama-sama po tayong lahat na magtulungan upang ang kalidad na edukasyon ay maibigay po natin sa ating mga mag-aaral. Hashtag para sa bata, para sa bayan. Hello, thank you very much, Sir John. Napakaganda po ng inyong presentation. At naniniwala po ako na maraming mga teachers ang uh, naging interesado no? na uh, subukan yung ganito ang strategiya na iyong pinakita sa hapong ito. Okay? So, marami pa rin mga nasa ating uh, page. no? Nandyan pa rin sila. Still watching po, sabi po ni Ma'am Mary Jane Spiritu. Still yes. here watching, galing kay Ma'am Mary Grace okay. Montanilla. Hello po, salamat naman po. Salamat, salamat po. Okay, so, our next facilitator na partner. Yes. Okay, so our next facilitator is my kababayan. So, tagasamal, may tataksamal ito. Okay, teacher two, she's a teacher two having five years in the field. She is the school ICT coordinator and awarded Outstanding Teacher in 2019. And the last but not least, another strategy from Samal District using virtual science labs and the youth and its use. Flexible Teacher 2 of Google Elementary School. Let us welcome Ma'am Mary Antoinette Valenzuela. Hello! Teacher Tonette here. Earlier, Mami Raflor discussed to us the different diseases of the stomach. Now, it's time for us to talk about different teaching strategies that we can use in teaching this topic. Now, let me focus with these three strategies. 
The first one is in career-based learning. It is a form of active learning that starts by posing questions, problems, or scenarios. The second one is picture analysis. With the use of pictures, pupils develop critical thinking skills, enhance their observation and interpretative skills, and develop conceptual learning techniques. And the last one is graphic organizer. It is a pedagogical tool that uses visual symbols to express knowledge and concepts through relationships between them. So, are you ready mga kasama? I hope you are. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started and move on with the application of these teaching strategies. Hi! Good afternoon, everyone. Are you ready to gain new learnings? I hope you are. But before that, let us go back to our previous lesson. Yesterday, we had talked about the main function of the stomach, which is to digest the food that we eat. Now to start with, let me show you these two pictures. I have here stomach A and stomach B. Look closely and tell me what have you noticed between them. Yes, you're right. Stomach A is healthy, while stomach B is really in not good condition. And what do you think so is the main reason? Stomach B might be suffering from some illness or disease. And that will be our topic for today. Diseases of the stomach. Are you ready to learn about it? Come, let's have some tour inside their stomach. Look, have you noticed that white spot? Do you know what is that? That white spot is what we call ulcer. Do you want to know what ulcer is? Ulcer is a stomach disease that is caused by not eating on time and taking too much acidic drinks and food. And to treat them, of course, we have to avoid eating acidic foods and drinks we have to eat on time and have some balanced diet. Now, what do you think might be wrong with this picture? Have you noticed that part inside the circle? That is what we call appendix. And what can you say about it? Yes, it is inflamed. An appendix having this condition is suffering from appendicitis. Appendicitis is a stomach disease that is caused by inflammation of appendix because it is blocked by undigested food. And to treat it, the best thing we can do is to get immediate medical attention. Whoa! What do you think is the man feeling right now? Yes, he is having some pain. Pain because of his stomach ache. And what do you think is the main reason why he is suffering from stomach ache? Yes, you're right. He might have some diarrhea. Diarrhea is a stomach disease that is caused by infection in the intestine by microorganisms. It is also caused by irregular contraction of intestine. And to cure it, we have to drink plenty of water and juices and have some proper hygiene and food handling. Are you now familiar with the different diseases of the stomach? That is where our lesson ends. I hope that you were able to get new learnings from our lesson today. Come, let us summarize what we had tackled. Today, we had talked about the different diseases of the stomach which are diarrhea, ulcer, and appendicitis. We had also talked about their causes and treatment. Now, let us check our new learning by answering this activity. Identify the stomach disease that is being described in each item by arranging the jumbled letters. Are you ready? For question number one, what is stomach disease is caused by inflammation of the intestines? The answer is appendicitis. You got it right! 
Now, what stomach disease can be treated by having proper hygiene? The answer is diarrhea. You are correct. And for the last item, this disease is caused by too much acid and not eating on time. The answer is ulcer. Very good. You got it right. Now I can say that you all did a great job. You really learned something from our lesson. And for your assignment, interview a member of the family who experienced having diseases in the stomach and ask them to share their stories with you. Again, I am Teacher Tonette saying, Marami man pong pagsubok ang ating kakaharapin sa ating new normal setup. Lahat po ito ay ating malalagpasan kung tayo po ay magiging positibo at patuloy na makikiisa sa ating mga kasama. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, sulong edukalidad. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma'am Antoinette. Thank you po sa ating mahuhusay na facilitators ngayong hapon. Okay. So doon sa diniskas ni Ma'am na strategy, talagang yung inquiry-based learning partner, no? It only it develops the higher order thinking skills of our learners and di ba? At saka very applicable siya sa kahit anong grade level. So Okay na po tayo for questions and clarifications. We are inviting all our speakers to set your cameras on for our Q&A portion. Matatsyaga talaga yun. No? Matatsyaga. Yan. So kasama na natin partner ang ating mga facilitators. Mahuhusay na facilitators ngayong hapon. So pwede na po tayong mag-entertain ng mga questions. Yes, partner. So meron akong nabasa dito sa ating uh, uh, may pinadala dito sa akin sa Uh, chat box, no? Yes. So, kasama na natin partner. Ang mga ating partner, ang ating mga facilitators. So, andyan na natin ba ang ating mga mga Ayan, okay. Yes, partner. So, meron akong nabasa dito sa ating uh, may pinadala dito sa okay, so, um, uh, chat box, no? Hindi lang nga po din. Ito na lang dati. Sige, ito na lang. Mama, ito na lang. So, pwede net partner, mag-entertain ng questions. Meron tayong questions dito. How do animals that live in extreme winter environment survive below freezing temperature? Ayan po. So, I think this topic should be answered by, by Ma'am Villorita. Hello, Ma'am Villorita. 
Hello po. Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Good afternoon, lahat. ma'am. <laughs> Despite all ng mga challenges natin, eto pa rin yes. tayo. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good afternoon po ulit. So, uh, bago ko po sagutin yung tanong, uh, let me give you first uh, a brief background ano kung bakit po tayo, bakit po tayo merong uh, areas na mayroong below freezing point. So, sabi dyan, uh, it is because of seasonal change daw po. So, seasonal change is caused by the natural tilt of the Earth and at the same time, yung orbit daw ng Earth around the Sun. So, therefore, okay. sabi niya, if the hemisphere is direct, uh, is not directly pointing towards the Sun, so it receives lesser amount of sunlight and at the same time, shorter yung kanyang days. So, mm-hmm. ngayon na mangyari, if the northern hemisphere is experiencing winter, yung southern hemisphere naman daw is experiencing summer and vice versa. So kaya meron tayong uh, meron tayong winter, kaya meron tayong four seasons, yung winter, spring, summer and fall. So yeah. ang tanong ko ay what are the different ano nga yun ulit ma'am? The different How do animals that live in extreme environment survive. How okay, they survive. Thank you po. So how they survive doon sa uh, below freezing temperature. So unang-una po dyan, they undergo the process of migration. Okay, mm-hmm. yun, wherein they tend to migrate from uh, one area to another. Yun po yung adaptation nila kapag kalalamig na yung panahon. Second one is hibernation, wherein in slow down nila yung kanilang metabolic processes. Uh, they also have their the presence of thick fur gaya po ng mga polar bears. Mm-hmm. Ano po? And uh, at the same time, nagka-camouflage din po sila. Kasi uh, kapag ka hindi sila magka-camouflage, they are in danger. So pwede silang maging prey doon sa area kapag ka sa mga times na yun. So yun po yung kanilang mga adaptations uh, sa area below freezing temperature. Thank you, ma'am. Video Rita, very well explained. Ano? Okay, Very so ma- partner, meron pa po ba tayong question dyan? Yes, may question dito para kay Ma'am Antoinette. Okay, the question goes like this. Among the three strategies that you've showed, what is the most applicable in the new normal setup? Wow. Ma'am Antoinette? Good afternoon po, Ma'am. Ayun po. So, alam naman po natin um, na tayo po ay nasa new normal. So, kung kung tatanungin po ako, what is the most applicable? Um, all of them po are applicable. Siyempre po, nakadepende po yon sa magiging topic po natin and sa modality po na gamit natin. So as teachers, alam naman po natin, napakagaling natin mag-adjust. Play po natin lahat ng strategies mm-hmm. natin. God bless po. Hope po na sagot ko po yung tanong. Salamat po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Antone. Partner, meron ka po bang questions dyan? Yes, we have another question for Ma'am Elisa. Hello, Ma'am Elisa. And Hello po. po. Si Ma'am Elisa. Hello, Ma'am Hello Elisa. Po. Meron po tayong po question. Apo. So, Apo. meron po tayong question po dito. How do different body structures of animals adapt and survive to different habitats? Hello po, hello po. Yes, ma'am. Uh, bali po, katulad din po ng sagot ni Ma'am Villorita. Uh, hello po. Uh, nagde-depend po yung ating mga animals to their habitat. Kung sila po, hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay naman po ang inyong ano sound. Apo. Katulad po ng kay Ma'am Villorita, uh, kung uh, sila po ay naka-live on land, uh, ang kanilang mga body parts po ang siyang nag a doon sa kanilang environment doon sa kanilang habitat. At ganun din po yung ganun din po yung sa water uh, kung sila ay mga pins, saka gills as yun, kaya sila po nabubuhay dahil po doon sa kanilang mga body part. So ginagamit po nila to upang uh, yung mga animals na ito makasurvive and maka-adapt to their different environment. Yan po ma'am. Okay ma'am. Thank you ma'am Eliza. Apo, thank you po. Partner, meron pa ba dyan sa yung question? 
Yan, meron pa dito. Talaga namang nakinig yung ating mga participants. Ito ay para kay Ma'am Nancy. Okay, Ma'am Nancy, here's your question. Parang tayong nasa ano, no? It's universe. <laughs> universe. <laughs> Ma'am Nancy, ito pa ang inyong question. <laughs> so, what is the importance of having specialized structure of plants? Okay, ma'am. Thank you for that question. Ang beauty, ang beauty contest, <laughs> Okay, so uh, for that question, ma'am, uh, every structures of plants uh, are suited for their particular needs. So meaning these structures are designed for them for a particular function. So plants uses these specialized structures to acquire, number one, their basic needs, uh, to protect themselves against the predators. And of course, some structures of plants are designed for their reproduction or means of reproduction. So again, for every specialized structures, there is an advantages designed for these plants. Yun lang po. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Thank you, Yes, partner, meron dito isang magandang question. Siguro, eto ah. For Ma'am Elisa again. Ayan, Ma'am, mabili ka ha. <laughs> Ayan, Ma'am, eto ang tanong. Among the three strategies, what is the easiest to apply both in face-to-face -face and new normal? O, di ba? Ang ganda ng tanong niya. Opo. Uh, katulad po na sabi na ating moderator kanina, yung think per share po, napakagamitin hmm lalo po sa face-to-face -face, din ba? Kahit naman po dito sa virtual, uh, ano natin ngayong pandemic, uh, gamitin po natin yung thing for sure kahit po naka-zoom po sa ayo sa ating mga bata. Kasi po, gaya ngayon, gamit, gamit ko po yung uh, zoom meeting palagi. Uh, useful po yung mga bata kapag naka-zoom sila, nakakapag-partner din po sila doon, nakakapag think for sure pa rin. Pero po yung mind mapping naman po. Yung mind mapping naman po ma'am, pwede rin pong gamitin for activity naman po at home. Na po. Tapos po yung 5E naman po, nakita ko po tong 5E na to, halos pareho naman po ng ating modules. Bali po yung parts ng modules natin, halos napapareho po sa 5E instructional model. Kaya halos po yung tatlo na to, Mag magamitin po ngayon, lalo na po pandemic. Salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. So, ibig sabihin, almost ng mga sinabi natin sa PGA, talaga namang akma sa ating new normal at face-to-face. -face. Okay, so okay. ma'am, kata, meron pa po ba, ma'am? Meron pa po ba tayong question, ma'am, my dear partner? Sana yung partner ko dyan. Yung maganda kong partner. <laughs> Hello, Ma'am Kata. Where are you? Wala <laughs> ng signal si Ma'am. So, nawalan po yata ng signal ang ating Ma'am Kata. So, thank you po. Sa ating mga facilitators, ngayong hapon talaga naman po nakita namin ang husay inyo sa in bawat topic at bawat um, strategy na inyo pong diniskas. Marami pong mga kaguruan ang tunay na natulungan ng mga strategies na naibahagi nyo po ngayong hapon. Maraming maraming salamat po. So pe, gusto rin po nating pasalamatan para uh, ngayong hapon, ano po, yung... Bumubuo po sa ating uh, theme para po maging uh, successful ang ating webinar ngayong hapon. So gusto po nating uh, pasalamatan the people behind this webinar series, our SDO um, Bataan Education Program Supervisor in Science, Dr. Edwin Riel Bermedillo. Thank you, sir. And, and also, Ma'am Mila, uh, Ma Mila Peña Flor, RCID Chief. At ang ating pong mga supervisor sa bawat Distrito at ang ating pong masisipag na mga punong guro. Maraming maraming salamat po.
Ganon din po yung ating technical teams. Ayan, baka magtampo sa akin itong mga ito. Huwag nakalimutan ko. <laughs> sa ating pong program design, Ma'am Jocelyn Peralta, Ma'am Jennifer de Guzman Baldonado. Um, sa ating pong Google Form, Sir Al Andrew Torres. Thank you po. Ma'am Ana Marie Sanggalang. Ayan, ma'am. Alam ko po yung talaga naman. Kahit nawawala tayo sa connection, eh. Napakasyaga ni Ma'am Ana. Thank you, Ma'am Ana. And Sir Dino Dominic Santos. Thank you po. Ano po? So, andyan na po ba yung ating Ma'am Kata? Ma'am Ana, nawala po yata si Ma'am Kata. Ano po? Nawala daw po yung net As niya, Ma'am. Ma'am internet niya. Okay po. So, This webinar will not be completed without hearing her message, the person behind success of the webinar series in grade 4. She is untiringly connects the facilitators to PMT and always see to it that no one lags behind. Let us welcome a diligent head teacher tree of Morong National High School, Madam Neri D. Mangalindan. Good afternoon everyone at magandang buhay po para sa ating lahat. In this second quarter webinar, which is primarily focused on teaching content and teaching strategies, we tried applying the different strategies to maintain the quality teaching learning process and help our students in understanding the lesson easier. So our SDO together with our EPS, are stepping off their efforts by providing series of webinars like this as resources to support teachers in adapting to this new normal teaching environment. Indeed, we teachers always find solutions and teaching strategies suited to our students with diverse learning skills and abilities. After viewing all the presentation of our facilitators, I know you share the same insights with me. The opportunities of doing things better and raising the bar of excellence in our work to improve the teaching and learning process are wide and limitless. I observe that all facilitators have great and commendable presentations. All of you deserve an applause for that. If all teachers do the same strategies as yours, one day, all teachers can find themselves managing virtual classroom with ease and convenience and can also communicate with their students over social media platform effortlessly, which are the basic necessity skills a teachers must have today as we provide education from a distance due to COVID-19 pandemic. And last but not the least, I would like to thank our unfaltering EPS, Dr. Edwin Riel Bermilio, for his unceasing support to each and every one of us through his sheer effort in providing ways on how we can improve our teaching strategies in this new normal pace of education. He is the man behind this significant webinar. To all my ever diligent moms and sirs as grade 4 facilitators who unsiringly devoted their time in perfecting their presentations, our grade 4 PMT, Mom Pe, Mom Juliet, and Mom Norisa, thank you for guiding and assisting me in facilitating this webinar, which I can say is a total success. Thank you all for all your valuable hard work. Needless to say, the teaching content and teaching strategies shared and presented by our facilitators will be of great help to all teachers and students. So based on the teaching strategies and the style showed in their video presentations, we as teachers must adapt, transform, and improve ourselves in utilizing the various teaching techniques and teaching strategies we learned from this webinar. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, sulong, edukalidad. Salamat at muli po magandang buhay para sa ating lahat.
Okay, thank you so much, Ma'am Neri. Okay, so nabanggit po natin kanina yung ating top participants. Naka-on, Ma'am. Naka-on po, Ma'am. Okay niyo, Ma'am. Okay po. So, meron po tayong top 15 participants. Ang mga naka-register po ay deaf ed uh, email. Ano po? So, let me um, read one by one. Ma'am Glenda Perez, Ma'am Maria Vizda, Ma'am Itneli Zag, Ma'am Katrina Carvajal, Ma'am Daisy Limbara, Ma'am Elizabeth Rojas, Ma'am Desiree Atienza, Ma'am Mary Mantilla, Ma'am Elana Frame, Sir Ger Gerson Dando, Ma'am Annalisa Moleno, Sir Noel Teresa Salonga, Ma'am Dalia Leia Nisay, Sir Gerald Teodero, and Ma'am Josephine De La Cruz. Ayan. Thank you so much sa inyong lahat po sa pagstay niyo po sa amin at sa pagpa-participate niyo po. Pa. Okay. So before we close, let me give you a quotation from Tim Minchin. Science is simply the word we use to describe a method of organizing our curiosity. So this is SLG Reyes from Orani North Elementary School, your host for today. At sa ngalan po ng aking kapartner, Ma'am Catalina G. Bonus of Samal North Elementary School, Samal District. Thank you everyone for staying with us. God bless everyone and have a nice day. Shh. <laughs>